Hello and welcome to Friday, June the 2nd. And we're going to finish up this series with a devotion I call Doing Life in the Line. Now, Jennifer talked about the fact that we all have a plot of ground. She talked about the fact that uh, gave the illustration of us all being in a line and some of us are farther ahead and others are farther behind because the people ahead had more advantage in certain areas and yet they are not without problems. The people in the back have had uh, more challenges to overcome, but in some ways they're more focused, they're more directed, they're healthier, they're able to uh, get from the back of the line to the front of the line. I told you uh, on uh, Tuesday when we looked at the devotion that if when I went through those questions with myself and my daughter Ashley, in those questions I would have been toward the back of the line and yet my daughter would have been in the very front up there standing next to Gideon. And the reason is because even though I was way back in the line to begin with, because of allowing godly character and God's values to direct my life, I moved in one generation from the back of the line to uh, really up to the front. I, you know, today, if you were to say, you know, where am I? I would be up closer to the front because I have become healthy. And a lot of that is due to what we talked about yesterday, which is the fact that I stopped judging and started being what I call doing life with the line to where I'm not jealous of the people ahead. I'm not a judgmental of the people behind, but I'm right in the middle going, let's all move the line forward. Let's do life in the line. In fact, that's the reason God why exists, because I want to be able to have people who are ahead of me to challenge me, but I want to make sure the people behind me don't get left behind. And, and as I begin to think about this doing life in the line, uh, there was a passage that came to mind, and it's from Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 12 and going through 16. Now, I want to read this to you, uh, and then uh, we'll kind of break it down a little bit. But it starts off talking about our own personal character. Paul is giving closing thoughts at this point, he says, be joyful in hope. In other words, I know that God is moving me forward so I can have joy no matter what's going on around. Patient in affliction. Why? Because in this world, with the junk that's all around, I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to have heartache. But I'm patient in that because I have a joy, a, a joy in the hope that is before me and then faithful in prayer. Why? Because when I'm faithful in prayer, when I'm really seeking the Lord, I get my heart in line with his. I begin to think right. Now he starts talking about how we interact with the line, with the people around us. He says, says, share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. You know, one of my uh, one of my favorite inspirational movies is a movie called Patch Adams. And the movie is, is wonderfully written in the fact that when it first starts, Patch Adams is on a bus heading to a psych ward because of the unbelievable depression in his life. He saw himself as a back-of-the-line person with very little to live for, hopeless. In the opening series, as, as we're hearing his thoughts, he says, it's as if I got lost in a deep woods. He goes, I would eventually find my way out, but in the most unlikely scenario. Later in the movie, uh, a young lady at the medical school where he was going asked him, uh, I heard you were, uh, he goes, in a psych ward? And she said, yes. And he goes, uh, and he kind of shared a little bit, and, and then she goes, what did the doctors do to help you? And he said, the doctors didn't help me. The patients helped me. He said, I learned by helping them with their struggles I began to find purpose and health and life in my own purpose. And he said, I wanted more of it, and I wanted more of it, and I wanted more of it. And he goes, and I really helped some of those people. And one of the things that we need to understand about doing life in the line that is so important is when it stops being all about me and my struggles and my hurts and, my, and what I did and what I didn't get and where my uh, people have been this to me and all that chaos, and all of a sudden it becomes, I am going to be joyful in hope, I will be patient in affliction, I will be faithful in prayer, and I'm going to do life with this line and do everything I can to take as many of us as I can have relation with and move us forward. 
And as he began to do that, he began to find direction and purpose in his own life. And the reason that he eventually became a medical doctor was he wanted to dedicate his life to helping other people because when he found out that helping other people made him healthy. So we look at it. It says, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Why? Because they're unhealthy. Yesterday I talked about the fact that I've learned that when I am judgmental, when I am critical, when I am bitter, when I am looking at the line and judging myself as better and them as worse or dysfunctional, or anything, that m almost every single time, in fact, I said every time, and I believe it probably is every time, it's because of something that hasn't been healed in me that causes me to react that way to them. You see, when I begin to do life in the line and begin to carry other people along with me, it's because I'm beginning to get a heart like God. And I don't curse and people who are dysfunctional because I realize they're dysfunctional. And if I get into that with them, I become dysfunctional. And I don't want to be dysfunctional. I want to be healthy. So I begin to stop judging. I let God be God. I, I got out of the God business. I don't want to do that. I want to do life in the line. I want to help everybody as much as they want to be helped and as much as I'm capable of helping to move us all forward. And so then he goes on and he goes, rejoice that with those who rejoice, mourn with those that mourn, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position and do not be conceited. Man, that's a great uh, reference for doing life with the line. The people that are having things go great, man, begin to be their champion. Rejoice with them. Our line is winning. We're going forward. Even if it's not a personal thing that's blessing me necessarily, if it's blessing someone else, when I learn to rejoice with them, I will be able to rejoice in anything. Second, mourn with those that mourn. Realize that there are people hurting. And when I identify and go, I've hurt too. I know what's going on. I begin to do life in this line, and I begin to become a strength for them, and they begin to go become a strength for me, just like Patch Adams said. When I begin to help the people who were hurting, all of a sudden I started to get healthier. I started to gain strength. So we're doing life in the line. We're going to rejoice with those that rejoice rather than being jealous or angry or frustrated that they got something I didn't. I'm going to look at the ones that are hurting and wounded, and I'm going to encourage them and pour my life into them. And somewhere in the middle of having that health, in the middle of those two extremes, I get healthy too. And then he says, don't be, don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. It doesn't matter where I am in the line. Somebody's going to be behind me. And a lot of times, you know, we want to strive to be with the rich and the beautiful and the popular and the talented and, you know, all those. And we tend to shun the back of the line. But let me tell you what, the greatest people I've ever spent time with are the people who are being impacted and touched by love and they begin to love uh, back. In fact, Jesus at one point was sitting in, a, in the Pharisee's home, which was probably very affluent. And a woman came in, and she wept on his feet because she had been, uh, uh, as the scriptures describe, a very sinful woman. And Jesus says to the Pharisee, he goes, you love little because you feel like you've been forgiven very little. But this woman loves much because she has been forgiven much. If we don't start blessing the people that are still behind us, in the line that are still struggling with some stuff that we may have gotten over or are still dealing with challenges that may not be in our life. As we rejoice with the ones that are ahead of us, we get healthy. As we spend time blessing and encouraging the ones behind us, we get healthy too. And what happens? We do life with the line and the line moves forward. Then at the end he says, don't be conceited. Boy, the second that we start to get healthy, what's the very first thing that happens? We start to get a little proud of ourselves and how well we're doing and what's going on. And I've pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. And, and the second that we gain that attitude, we begin to get unhealthy again. Again, we are called to do life with the line. Jesus was so wonderful about finding people where they were, walking with them in the struggles and in the place where they were, and finding life in the line and carrying the whole line forward. And that's really what I want to be about too. Let's pray. Father, we just ask that you would help us 
to have this kind of heart, this Romans 12, 12 through 16 kind of heart, that we would rejoice with the people ahead of us in the line, that we would encourage and uh, equip and strengthen the ones that are behind, the cranky people in the line, Lord, that we would realize that that's a result of being unhealthy and we don't enter into it. We would not become proud or conceited in the progress that we've made, but that we would rejoice in doing life in the line. Father, it, it was mirrored so beautifully by your son Christ when he lived on the planet. And I want to have a heart like his to do life in the line, to rejoice with those that rejoice, to mourn with those that mourn, to be healthy because I'm living in a healthy life with the others that are around me and surround me. Lord, give us that heart. Give us that vision. Give us that purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I encourage you. Let's do life in the line. And I will see you Sunday morning. Lord bless.